Thank you very much. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. I believe those are actually posted over on uh, university.ucadia.info, transcribed calls. Uh, audio as well as the transcriptions are there. So just to let you know. Uh, let me get to Ron. Ron, you're next. Hello, Ron, Frank. How are you doing? Hi, Ron. Hi, Frank. How are you? Good. Can I um, take about two minutes to explain my uh, experiences with the banks here in town? Yes. Okay. Please. <clears throat> it, it, it. Tuesday after or Tuesday morning, I found a, a company called U.S. Trust. It's a subsidiary of Bank of America. They do have custom tailored special deposit accounts, but uh, the, mem- the minimum entry is $3 million deposit. So that's kind of a downer for that one. So they suggested I go downstairs and talk to the retail people. I go down there and they want to know, number one, who is the grantor? Well, I said, well, it's the, you know, it's the divine creator. Well, that was a, that was a wrong answer. <laughs> then she says, well, who's, who's this trust number? You know, we have the name trust and then the number and that's what the IRS issued the EIN number under. So, and then she didn't like the the trust type. I told her it was a non-withholding foreign grantor trust. Never heard of it. They called the headquarters. They've never heard of it. And I says, well, it's it's under IRS regulations 671 to 679. Oh well, we don't care what the IRS does. We don't have an entry for that type of trust. So we have three problems. The name of the trust they don't like. They don't like the grantor, and they don't like the trust type. And I was denied even a simple trust account. And I found that at two other banks, same thing. Thanks, Ron. Look, we are not, you know, you've heard me tonight talk about Mm -hmm. necessity, yeah? Yep, and, and and we are not trying at all to make things harder than they need to be. In fact, making things harder than they need to be is, is again part of madness. Right. However, these trusts are what they are. Mm-hmm. They are they do come from a superior register, and we are claiming our rights. If if, if the bank will not even accept the most gracious and simplification of description which it sounds like they won't even do that, then it really leaves us no alternative, providing we have documented this, than to effectively uh, use our own banks as a medium and then establish uh, at least one account at a state level that we can trust, sorry to use the word again, but we can trust uh, some institution to manage for us as we grow at, at each state and province and territory, but and then use our own banks as a way. And all the, all those other banks would be doing would be holding uh, fiat currency on beh- on our behalf, right? Right. As an as an intermediary. Beyond that, I mean, what I'm seeing with banks is is the banks, as I expected, are just scorpions. They they will not yield. They mm-hmm. will not yield even to the most simplest of of uh, procedures. And ultimately, that will be their downfall. And I'm coming to the, the position very soon in the way we're doing that not a single bank, unless they step up very soon, not a single bank will be redeemed by Eucadia. Mm-hmm. Not a single one. They will all fall the way they're going. Right. Uh, well, but thanks, Ron. Thank you for, I, for that I make information. Suggest, Frank? Yeah, yeah, please. On the EIN, the application for the EIN, we call the trust name, you know, trust number, and then the number, right? Yep. And then the IRS sends up a follow-up letter, and the follow-up letter has the identical information. So if yep. we use the letter from the IRS, the bank doesn't like that name. You know, they wouldn't even look at it. Yep. So if we could... Change the name and, and still, and then put the ID number or do something 
different because we can cover the rest, you know, the the trust type. But um, well, let, let, let's have a look at that because again, I don't want to make this more complicated than it needs to be. I know. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, one of the things in their system is simply this: um, it could be the Ron Davenport Trust, right? Right. Because we're making a claim of right for the name, aren't we? Are yes, we are. So there's no reason for us not to be confident in claiming the Ron Davenport Trust, right? Right. So I think there's straight away the answer to that question, right? And then we on the uh, EIN application, we could call it a pure trust. Correct. Yep. It'd be called a pure trust. That's Great. right. I think, look, again, I, 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 I'm sorry because I'm learning as much as everyone else. That's why, you know, I, that's why I'm, I'm finishing up at the end of the year because there's a limit to what I know, there's a limit to what I can do, and I'm not the source of all knowledge. <laughs> so uh, we, we, the, the reality is that, that that could ultimately be the simplest way of presenting these documents and allowing the system to stay in honour. Because I'm, what I'm getting from this at the moment is if, if they didn't want us... To, to do this properly, they would not write back to us, Ron. They wouldn't. Right. Yeah? I know. The, the IRS and the IMF, who are well aware of who we are, want us to do it properly so that we can stay within the limits of their system. Now, that that, that is Jesuit influence as opposed to the bankers and the gold. It's slightly different. Um, it's different to the Foundation X people. So that, to me, is encouraging that, that they're giving us a chance of doing this properly. So let's take that offline but I think your contribution tonight is brilliant, and that may well be what we need to do, uh, providing we've issued our EDPs, yeah? That's correct. Uh, uh, close for Ds. Okay, right. thank you. Thanks. Good. Bye. Done. Thank you, Ron. Okay, we have uh, Ford Mann. You have a question? Hey, Frank, how you? Yeah, 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 i got a few questions. Hey, Frank. Um, By the way. My internet was... My internet was cutting in and out, so I was missing bits and pieces of stuff, and I just want to clarify some things that, that, you, that I thought I heard you say. Um, first of all, you said in order to get the EIN, you have to do the deed poll on the first time, correct? Uh, in order to get the EIN, you have to do it. Yes, you do have to do it. You have to start the process on the ecclesiastical deed. On the on. If you didn't, then you'd need, need to follow up and actually pursue it with vital. So if you did court first, then issue a separate process through to vital. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing is, and I, and I've heard of people uh, once they go through the depot procedures and they file a lien against these people, it's more or less like uh, they'll be running for the rest of their life because these people basically want to come after and put them in jail just for trouble stuff because you know you did the right thing. You've, you've said some. So you've said some really important things, I think, there, and, and, and I could not hear them because you're falling out. So can you just say the last bit very carefully so we can all hear, and then I'll comment, please. Okay. Um, and, follow, and doing the procedures of the depot, and once you get to the point where you file liens against these people that want to be ignorant, um, it actually comes back on you to where they'll be after you for the rest of your life and want to try to put you in jail or prosecute you for all kinds of stuff because you messed their life up. Okay. Okay, so um, what you're saying is you, you, you've, you've heard of people um, that are being hassled or you've heard of people, I'm not quite sure what you're hearing. Or are you asking a question or are you saying you've heard something, a yeah, rumor or something? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard uh, and, and, you know, seen some people uh, that when they follow the liens, you know, they're basically running for the life because, you know, they messed up these people's oh, okay. lives. Well, yeah. All right. There is a... Um, okay, what's happening is, and, and, and understand that, that that it's like we're in a giant um, daisy chain phone line. So one person speaks to another, and by the time it gets to the end, the two are connected. There is a long history of people who have issued agricultural liens who have uh, come to grief, a long history. And, and that history is well documented, but in every single case when those liens have been issued, 
they have been issued without a proper claim of right having been established, such as the ecclesiastical deed, and they have been issued firmly uh, from a position of a Roman person and not a trust. So what's happened is that people's uh, uh, true knowledge of these facts are now unfortunately getting included in people's concern, and justifiably so, about the care that is needed before one proceeds with issuing any kind of lien in their system, because the UCC is a real system. It's not sitting there dormant. It's used by them every day in their battles between countries that owe money uh, in, in liens and all the sorts of stuff that's happening in the background that we don't see. So the short answer is this. Are people issuing liens under the Eucadian process as a trust and encountering problems? No, they're not. No, they're not. Not one. Have people come to the point of about to issue a lien and received threatening phone calls or threatening visits? Yes, they have. That is true. That has happened. And one woman who's 79 experienced that process. Have many? No. But one is enough for, for concern. So what we've said is that if you reach the point of about to issue the lien and you encounter that kind of good old boy type intimidation, that's where you raise it to the great writ level, bypass your county court, your state officials and go straight to Washington and above. So I just want to make that clear. Has anyone been put in prison or found themselves in trouble from issuing a lien under the Acadia Trust system? No, absolutely not. And if you hear that rumour, it's completely untrue. Have people had trouble in the past from liens? Yes, they have. But none of them have followed Eucadia. They've all done it in, in previous knowledge. Have people been um, uh, threatened, potentially, by the issuing of a lien? Yes, they have. And it's why we're moving forward to the Great Writ. So that's the honest truth of where we're at at the moment. Okay? Does that answer Great. your question? Thanks. Okay, Thank, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, yes, Scorpion, if you have another question, you can put yourself back in the queue. Thank you very much. Uh, a better way? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Frank and Carolyn. Hi. Um, Hi. I have a question about um, foreclosures and bringing yourself out of delinquency. Now, yep. on, the, on the financial statement that we're supposed to include when we're trying to um, make a payment, should that yep. financial statement include, let's say um, you've already been foreclosed on, yep. and I guess there would be an assumption that you still owe if your house has not been sold. So you, you would, they, would, they would assume that you still owe that debt. So would you include that, suppose, the debt on your financial statement? Yeah, look, what you want to do, um, and, and we haven't helped people on this, but because there's a certain... There's certain um, uh, elements. If if the house hasn't been sold, you, there is actually ability to change the locks and move back in. The, the right of redemption. I, I means, actually haven't moved out. All oh, right, there's someone in there already. Okay. You, what's that? You haven't moved out? No, I have not moved out. I have not abandoned the house. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. This is what you do. Uh, you um, you um, make sure that you've got the EDP process underway, so you put a claim of right in. You make it known that you've contested the the title. So the title is contested, and that the and that the mistake of fact is that they have um, the clerk has unlawfully um, issued a directive on a contested title, and um, as part of the remediation, here is the consideration uh, to clear up the matter. So first, you want to, you want to put the clerk in hot water, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you put the clerk in hot water on the fact that your Ecclesiastical deed contests a title and that the clerk has in fact um, uh, a conveyed property uh, for which there is a contest. Yeah. Now they might say, oh, well, you didn't have it in time, whatever. It doesn't matter. You've created a controversy for that clerk at the most serious level. They are not allowed to do these kinds of things. Right? You then give them the way out, which is your financial statement, the list of the months 
um, consideration.